Hello, I'm Lieutenant General Jonathan Riley. Uh, I'm a Royal Welsh Fusilier. I'm now the Chairman of the Museum Trust, uh, and I was Colonel of the Regiment, and uh, before that I commanded one of the battalions of the regiment. The 15th Battalion was part of the drive to expand the army rapidly. Uh, Britain had effectively two armies in 1914. It had a regular force, uh, which was partly at home and partly in, mostly in India. And it had a territorial army, which, uh, who were part-timers. But Kitchener had seen uh, as early as the uh, autumn of 1914 that the war would not be over by Christmas. We needed a big army, and so he set about driving uh, the creation of a new army. And this uh, battalion, the 15th, was one of two battalions of the London Welsh, uh, which was going to be raised in London as part of that. Uh, the 15th was the one that was to go sh abroad. The other battalion, the 18th, uh, was going to stay at home. As well as being part of the uh, rapid expansion of this new army, uh, the London Welsh was part of a particular uh, political agenda uh, of Lloyd George uh, and uh, a bunch of other liberal uh, MPs who were fervent champions of Wales and the Welsh people. Uh, and Lloyd George uh, had the idea that by using the existing territorial division uh, of Wales, the 53rd Division, which existed, um, by perhaps pulling out some of the regular battalions that were scattered around other divisions uh, and core of the army, and by creating a new division, the 38th Welsh Division, uh, he would be able to uh, form a Welsh National Corps. Now, why did he want to do this? Well, the formation of a National Army Corps uh, can be a very powerful instrument in nation building. Uh, you only have to look at the experience of Australia uh, and Canada uh, during the First World War, New Zealand in the Second World War, uh, to see this in action. The creation of the Welsh Army Corps did not work, uh, really, for two reasons. The first was practical. There just weren't enough people. Uh, even though Wales provided proportionately far more than its fair share of manpower during the First World War, it simply could not man and maintain at least two divisions and all the core troops, the art supporting artillery and transport and engineers and medics and so forth, which would have had to have been recruited in the border counties of England and therefore substantially diluted the sense uh, of Welshness in such a corps. The second reason was that to do with this business of national identity. If you have a Welsh Army Corps, then you probably also have to have a Scottish Army Corps and an Irish Army Corps. What was the big political hot potato of the day in 1914? Irish Home Rule. The whole business of Irish Home Rule had been put on the back burner uh, for the duration of the war by mutual consent, and nobody wanted to take it off and bring it up to the boil again. It's almost easier to enumerate the, the well-known writers and artists who are not in the role of Fusiliers rather than those who were. Uh, it wasn't unique to the First World War. It was a tradition that had existed since in the regiment since the Revolutionary War in America and which went on afterwards through the Second World War and still is there today. And it coexisted sometimes uneasily with the, uh, with the rather brasher, louder, sporting uh, tradition of the regiment. Um, but, it was, but you're right, it was there. And uh, it was very strong in the 15th Battalion, because as well as David Jones, we also have Llewellyn Wynne Griffith. Later on, we have Ellis Evans, Heath Wynne. Uh, we have Bill Tucker, uh, who wrote one of the few accounts that we have of being a prisoner of war uh, in the First World War. Uh, later worked on The Times, uh, helped put together The Times Atlas of the World. Uh, we had a chap called uh, Hughes. I've um, irritatingly forgotten his first name, uh, uh, who um, emigrated to Australia and wrote a very uh, well-regarded book called Crow on a Barbed Wire Fence. And finally, there was Wynne Weldon, uh, father of Sir Hugh Weldon, great BBC dynasty. Uh, now, I can find no evidence at all that they, any of them knew that each other was there in the 15th Battalion. In the regular battalions, the 1st and 2nd, Graves and J.C. Dunn and Frank Richards and Sassoon and uh, Thomas and people like that, they, they all knew each other. 
uh, and they, they knew each other during the war and they kept up their correspondence afterwards. Uh, but in the 15th Battalion, it doesn't seem so. And it's a bit of a puzzle as to why this is so, and there, there are some possible answers. Uh, one is that um, the battalion was a war-raised unit, and its focus was at, was, was at company level. And in a war-raised unit, you tend to know the people in your own company, uh, and you don't necessarily know the people in other companies of the battalion. You haven't got the chance to get to know them. Uh, the other thing is, is possibly that language was a, was a divide, uh, in that some, uh, like Heath Wynne and Llewellyn Wynne Griffith, were well speaking Others, like David Jones, were most emphatically not. Uh, and so they, uh, they, they, didn't, uh, they weren't able to communicate their ideas. If you were to say to me, well, why, why is it that the Royal Welsh Fusiliers had this literary and artistic tradition? And, and it, it's not just in writing, uh, either prose and poetry. Uh, it goes into, uh, into painting and drawing um, and also into the performing arts. I mean, um, Arthur Askey, for heaven's sake, was in the regiment during the First World War. Uh, so it's, it's, it's the arts in their widest sense that were a, 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 that were a feature of the regiment at that time. If you, if you ask me, why, why is this so? Well, again, it's a bit of a puzzle. Uh, I could respond by saying that it was, from its earliest days, a Welsh regiment, and the soul of uh, Wales is intensely artistic. Uh, OK, up to a point, but then again, quite a lot of the people who were involved in this tradition were Welsh by adoption, uh, or were English, like Graves and, and like Sassoon. Uh, so uh, how is it? I don't know. The first day uh, of, the, uh, of, of the attack on the Somme, the 1st of June, the, the sector around Mametz was one of those areas on the Somme where ground was made. Uh, it wasn't all a, 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 a bloody disaster. Uh, and some ground was made uh, around there. Uh, and that was one of the reasons why later on, uh, a week or so later, the a decision was made to reinforce success. Um, the second phase, uh, actually getting into the wood, uh, was uh, very difficult, very bloody. Uh, and if you have a look at uh, Llewellyn Wynne Griffith's memoir, uh, you'll see how, uh, how, uh, the, how, how badly wrong it went at one stage and how much worse it would, not, it would have gone had it not been for the intervention of, of the brigade commander who stopped the attack, which he thought would be suicidal. But the later stages uh, after that, which actually cleared the wood, uh, were, um, by the standards of the day, astonishingly successful. Uh, and again, if you look at Robert Graves' account, when uh, he turned up in the wood later on and, and describes how there wasn't, there wasn't a tree left standing or unshattered, uh, the, the dead were lying everywhere. These great, huge, big, well-made soldiers of the Prussian Guard and the Lair Regiment, who'd been seen off uh, by a bunch of volunteers uh, from all parts of Wales who were often half their size. I think it was because he had joined the 15th Battalion pretty early on, right at the beginning, and therefore uh, he was part of a group which had joined together, had been through its apprenticeship together, had gone into the line together, had served its time together, and then had gone into their first big battle together. And they took a lot of casualties. Uh, the battalion wasn't the same uh, again after that. Uh, after that, it had to be made up with drafts of largely Welsh-speaking uh, people from North Wales who were, who were not London Welshmen. And uh, so that initial flowering uh, of the battalion uh, wilted. Uh, it didn't die, but it certainly wilted at Mametz, and what came after wasn't the same. <laughs> 